welcome to Shifting Religious Concepts. We are SRC. We're pleased to be here with you today for a novel look at the Bible and what it means for all of us. My name is Mark Thomas. I'll be moderating today. Just a few things for the audience before I introduce our panel. Uh, please keep your microphones on mute during the program. Uh, this is necessary because it, uh, if too many mics are on, it just causes too much background noise. We do, however, SRC does, however, want you to have the opportunity to ask questions or make comments during the show. So please raise your hand and we uh, will try to get you uh, answer your questions or uh, respond to your comments real time. Or uh, you can also use the chat feature, which is at the bottom middle of the screen of your uh, Zoom panel. Today, uh, Nala D and Archie Sanders are here with us by the magic of Zoom. Nala and Archie have both been students and then teachers of the Bible for many years. Anala has published two books and is also a noted public speaker and is an ordained minister. Archie has pastored for over 20 years in Virginia as an ordained minister and has, along with Anala, actively studied from many other spiritual disciplines. We also have an announcement. Uh, if you all watched our last series, I'm sure you noticed and appreciated the valuable contribution of Dr. Kadar Griffo, who is here with us today. Uh, the contribution the valuable contribution he made for, in those broadcasts was noticed. So after some intense negotiations with Griff, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we've all decided to, uh, to uh, make him a contributor on SRC. So we'll be seeing him regularly, I'm sure. Uh, he's a great match as he brings a unique perspective on the universe, our bodies and biblical symbolism. So welcome to Dr. Kadar Griffo. Thank you. Um, so between Archie, Archie Sanders, and Ala D and Dr. Griffo, SRC presents a panel with lots of experience and a unique message of who we are. They're here today as contributors, but also don't forget that at some time or another, they came to a crossroads and shifted their religious concepts too. So today we're going to start this series with something a little different. SRC has so, so far presented three series. Uh, we hope most of you uh, viewers have watched all these series, but I'm sure there's some that did that ever that are just coming in now. But the series were uh, Imagination in the Bible, the Willie Lynch and Blinded Mind series, and the Art of Creation. Now we have, of course, a mission statement and we have a message on our newsletter. However, at this point, we felt something more comprehensive would be helpful for our audience. So uh, all three of these series stand alone, but they also have a collective message. So before we start the Mini Mansion series and as a lead into it, we've asked Archie kind of twisted his arm to uh, take some time today and talk to us about uh, all these topics that SRC has covered to this point, and also to highlight how they help us to understand our true selves. So Archie, take it away, please. Yeah. Uh the series that we had, we, we, we talked about the imagination in the Bible, the blinded mind, uh, dealing with the Willie Lynch speech, and then the art of creation. Um, and it's very important uh, for, for the audience to understand that SRC, uh, the things that, 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 we, that we, we speak about in um, our mission and uh, our message. Uh, you could read that, and and uh, I just uh, hit on the message a, a little bit, right quick, because uh, you you must understand that that we we understand that the Bible is an important religious and historical document. Uh, we believe that the Bible has been distorted from its original meaning over the centuries. That is why we at Shift and Religious Concepts we are trying to we're not trying we are lighting up the minds of people so they can come to understand what has really happened. And there are going to be times when you might not quite understand something, but that is why you, you, you can, we have it so that you can ask questions and, and, you know, uh, send us a text or, you know, write, write a, a essay uh, as, as we had people to do and, and, and tell us about what it is that you think we're saying. So, uh, we understand that that the Bible has been used for political gain or interpreted by religious leaders to influence behavior. Our message is simple. Read and understand the Bible as a great storyteller of the past intended it. Begin by capturing, capturing, 
the re reality of who God truly is and then discover what it means to all of us and see how that knowledge can manifest itself in our lives. So in the imagination in the Bible, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we, 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 we talked about is uh, Albert Einstein, how he said, and, and, I, and, and that stuck with me for a while. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. See, so we, we, we open up the, the mind of people to, to, to come to understand that uh, imagination is important. Matter of fact, uh, here is a quote from William Blake. I rest not from my great task to open the eternal worlds, to open the immortal eyes of man inwards into the worlds of thought, into eternity, ever expanding in the bosom of God, the human imagination. You have to understand, we've said so many times, we're God in a flesh suit, uh, as my dear sister Nala uh, uh, says a lot. We're God in, in, in a flesh suit. And a lot of people, uh, and, and, and even me in the beginning myself, we, we couldn't quite get it that way because it was not presented to us that way. So we at SRC, we are opening up the imagination, allowing you to come to understand that you are more powerful than what you really think you are. And, and, and the imagination series uh, uh, did quite a bit. Uh, Neville said that uh, uh, the word imagination, it, it says it is made to serve all manner of ideas. That's one of the things that he said. For example, we ask a man to use his imagination meaning that his present outlook is too restricted and therefore not equal to the task. We ask man to do that. In the next breath, we tell him that his ideas are pure imagination, uh, thereby implying that his ideas were unsound. We speak of a jealous or suspicious person as a victim of his own imagination, meaning that his thoughts are untrue. A minute later, we pay a man the highest tribute by describing him as a man of imagination. Thus, the word imagination has no definite meaning. Even the dictionary, it sort of doesn't help with that much. But uh, we at SRC, we open that thing up so you can come to understand what imagination uh, was, was truly about here. And uh, Neville said he identified the central figure of the Gospels with human imagination, uh, the power which makes the forgiveness of sins, the achievement of our goals inevitable. Uh, all things are made by him, and without him, not anything made that was made. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. There's only one thing in the world, imagination, and all our deformations of it. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Imagination is the very great, the imagination is the very gateway of reality. Man, said Blake, is either the art of God or a phantom of the earth and of the water. Naturally, he is only a natural organ sub the sense. The eternal body of man is the imagination. That is God himself, the divine body, Yod Shen Adian, Jesus, and Yod Hivahi, the Father. We are his members. Imagination allowed us to see that we ourselves have an ability and a power that the ancient, uh, 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 the church fathers did not want us to be aware of. And it all ties in to what we came up, what we talked about next. We talked about uh, Willie Lynch, the, the blinded mind. In order for your mind to be blinded, your imagination plays a part, everyone. Imagination. So we open up the imagination, then we showed you how somebody can mess with your imagination and cause an issue in your life as was the, 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 the Willie Lynch speech that it was a myth that 
that uh, was exposed. We, we, we came about, we used that to show you and, and, and various other things, how that the mind can be blinded, but it took the imagination for that to happen. Uh, that Willie Lynch speech, uh, speech supposed to have happened back in 1712, I believe, uh, if I'm correct. Yeah, 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 that's when it's supposed to have happened, but it was uh, it was put out like 1995, and this is 2020, and there are still people who hold that to be true. There are still people who have not checked to see if it's authentic. We at SRC, we bring up these things so that you are able to see the light that went out. There was a light that went out. So we we bring it up. We help you to see that the mind can be blinded, but you have a part. But the imagination is what causes you to fall into the position that you're in. I never thought until uh, 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 my, my sister and I, we, we talked and we talked. Now I come to understand that the very thing that has placed me in the position that I'm in is my imagination. It's what I've thought of. It's what I've believed and held on to. What about you? If we would just admit it, our imagination plays a great part. And, 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 and the imagination, the blinded mind, and the art of creation, we, we, we open it up so that you can, can see yourself and see where we are. Uh, Man is what his environment and education make him. These mold the thoughts and fix the beliefs that control our mind. When the mind is controlled, the man is controlled. To that end, our environment was built around us. You see where we what we did with imagination and the blinded mind. We control our mind, we control ourselves. To that end, our environment is built around us. Somebody's light gonna come on and they're gonna get this. And the scope of our education is prepared by the powers that rule our civilization. So well that this 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 work has been done for us it is is uh we're now looking for more evidence to support what we already believe. But you got to watch this. And you call that searching for truth. We at SRC. We're going to, we are showing you where the light went out at so you can put the light back on or get it back on. Uh, according to the gospel of Jesus, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But that freedom has not come because truth has been kept from us. We are bringing that truth about. Before you can understand the truth, you must, under, you must learn. And SRC is helping you to learn what the untruths are. Before, let me say it again, so to be clear. Before you can understand the truth, you must understand the untruths that were told to you. And we are opening up that door for you. We are, we are allowing you to, to not just sit down to a Sunday sermon and, and say, oh, I had a good time. But we, we are allowing you to step out of the box and, 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 and create some things and think for yourself and, and, and see what it is that has been told to you, how you may have been blinded. You are prepared for the truth by learning how you have been deceived. Imagination, blinded minds, the art of creation. Now, you can take your Bible and go to the last nine verses of the last chapter of the book of Mark, and it tells you something. And I, I got to get this to you because, see, we got to show you where the light went out at. And it tells you that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believe it not shall be damned. This happened back in the fourth century, y'all. This is 2020. SRC 
It's giving you a new outlook on what you can do and what has happened to you that caused you to be in some of the situation that you're in. I, I, I said before that extortion is something that we see in the movies. And it sort of works like this. I have a real nice business and along come some gangsters that say, and they compliment, oh yeah, you know, you got a real nice business here. Oh man, you're doing great. Uh, it's too bad that somebody could come in and tear all your stuff up and, and take all your money and rob you and, and, and do all these things to you. But if you will give us a certain percentage, we will make sure these things won't happen to you. That is sort of extortion to me. I don't know about you, but I give you an ultimatum. You do this, you'll be okay. If you don't do it, we're going to tear you apart. We have to be very careful to what has been presented to us. That's why we at SRC have, first of all, wanted you to open up your imagination. And then, then once we got you to see that you can open up your imagination and what your imagination is, we showed you where you could be blinded at. And this is one of the, the places where they started to blinding people back in the fourth century because they said, you, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe it not shall be damned. That's Mark, you read it for yourself. What are you to believe according to that? A physical resurrection, a post humus judgment, a vicarious atonement, a heaven for the saved, a hell for the unsaved. We are trying to get you, you know, trying to have to get rid, rid of that word. We are showing you, we are taking you out of the box. Get out of the box. You got to crawl out, climb out, get somebody to throw you a rope, get out the box and start the thinking about what has caused us to be where we are. Imagination in the Bible, blind the minds, the Willie Lynch speech that was that that they showed you that that was a myth, exposed a myth. What I'm telling you right now in Mark, it started something in your mind. People are scared of going to hell. They are scared. So that's one of the things that man does, you know, and we, we talked about that back there. That, that's man does that to your mind. Get you to imagine that something terrible is going to happen to you. Then we went on to the art of creation, letting you know, Lord, now, now, see, this is a preaching moment, but I ain't here to preach today, so <laughs> I know my sister. Oh, no, no, you're not. No, 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 but imagination about blind minds and the art of creation the art of creation we came about we began to, to tell you some things that 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 god said let us make or create man us who is the us was there somebody else there and i couldn't find out there was an unspeakable word that uh was not supposed to be spoken which was jada ivahi which supposed to be it was jehovah but it was you creating, becoming aware of who you are, your awareness. My sister so often says that you have to believe in who you are, what you want, and within you, you will find a way to get to what it is that you are after. You don't have to go on the outside to get it. It's already in you. The creativeness is there. The imagination in the Bible, the blinded minds, and the art of creation uh, was we brought it forth so that you could see how vast the mind can be and your imagination, and then how just a one letter or speech can cause you to be bound up. And then we want you to understand that you can create your own world. Okay. We're going to now talk about the many mansions, of course, and refers to the scripture of John 14, verse 2. Now, our concentration, though, will also be on the first verse of that chapter in John and on the third verse. So, so if you have your Bibles, uh, go to... Uh, 
John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. And those verses read, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare, for, I go to prepare a place for you. And verse 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and, and that where I am, there ye may also, there you may be also. Okay. Anala, let's, uh, let's get those basic concepts and takeaways uh, for this series, okay? We haven't heard these before. Okay, I will do that. Let me just share my screen first so that we can, uh, the audience can see what we are talking about as well. Okay, so our takeaways for this particular series, which is many mansions, is how to not let your heart be troubled. The location of the father's house, where is the, you know, people want to know where, how do I get there? Where, you know, how, where is it at? What our spiritual guides meant when the word mansion was used, how to access what's in the mansion, what's within the mansion, and how much stuff is in the mansion. And finally, how to keep the stuff that you get out of the mansion. So that will be the takeaways uh, for this series. Okay. Um, so Anala, first question about this. This is, uh, this is uh, pertaining to the first verse, basically, um, uh, from uh, John 14, where it says, uh, let not your heart be troubled. You were talking mm -hmm. about that. What, was this scripture telling us to believe in Jesus Christ? Uh, well, first, I just want to say good morning to everyone and good morning to all our international friends and everyone who's on with us today. We are live today on Facebook as well. So hi to all our Facebook friends as well. Thomas, you may remember that we defined the word Christ in some episodes before. And one of the definitions for Christ is the expression of God's nature through human beings. So I want to ask, answer your question by first saying, how does one, asking the question of how does one experience uh, the expression of God's nature within? How do we, how do, we do that? First, as uh, Archie was saying, we have to see ourselves in the Bible. We have to, when we read the Bible, read the Bible as you are a, a participant of the Bible, not just a story about someone else. The Bible was provided for us as a tool to awaken the spiritual as, uh, uh, aspect of every indi individual. And it's not talking about an awakening from the outside. It is a internal awakening. And then second, let's look at and ponder the definition for expression. Because expression, it says expression of God's nature through human beings. So what does that mean? So let me just share my screen just for a second so that you can see the definition that we're talking about. Sorry about that. So now, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So expression, indication of feeling, spirit, character, the quality or power of expressing an attitude or emotion. So we see um, this, we see what expression means as it relates to expression of God's nature through human being. It's a feeling, it's a spirit, it's a character, it's an emotion. So when we are talking about the word Christ, we are talking about, we understand that we're not talking about a person here. We're not talking about a human person here. We're talking about a mindset. We're talking about an emotion. And so now when we understand that, we can allow, we can see what that, uh, act, that, what that name or that term Christ really means. And I'll say it like this. I'll say that we are gods and have the ability and power to <coughs> express the mindset of the higher self or God or whatever you might want to call that. That is what the definition of Christ is. But I'd like to just take this a little bit deeper if I, if I could and, and look at in the 14th chapter, it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So when you look at the word let, that lets us know that we can allow our hearts to be troubled or we can allow it to pass, we can hold on to it, or we can let it go, we can allow it to come. 
we have the power, as Archie was saying, to not let our hearts be troubled at all. And I want to just go quickly to a scripture that's going to help you see this. And then we're not going to unpack this particular scripture today, but I do want to just share it with you briefly so that you can understand when we talk about how you have the power to do this, you can read it for yourself and read yourself in the scripture. In 2 Kings, and you can go there if you have your Bibles, go to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. And I'm just going to briefly summarize this for you. In 2 Kings, the king was very troubled and wanted someone to tell him, and of course, this is a story now, wanted someone to tell him who was the next king, who's, who's, who, who's, who's, who's with me and who's not with me. So he wanted Elijah, he wanted to go get Elijah. Elijah, and this story is the higher consciousness to get him to uh, talk to him and tell him who, you know, who, who's, who's for me, who's, who's not with me. So in this story, uh, the king sent out chariots and horses and surrounded where uh, Elijah was, which is, you know, when we're thinking about our own self, we think about sometimes how we feel so surrounded by trouble and, and, and things like that. Now, in this story, Elijah's servant, which is the subconscious uh, a part of Elijah, uh, uh, us, the subconscious went, got up early in the morning and, and you know, Dr. Griffo, so that's the best time to to meditate, got up early in the morning. So in the morning, you can imagine that you are meditating and looked out and saw all these chariots and stuff surrounding their city. So now think about this. Now, so the, the Elijah, the conscious mind was looking out and seeing what it was, what it looked like. And then this picture was transferred over to the subconscious mind. But what did Elijah do in this story? As you look at verses 11, 14, 15, and 16, and 17, you can read these things for yourself, what Elijah did is said, you know, because the servant came back and said, oh, wait a minute, Elijah, I I'm looking at all these chariots and stuff that you showed me because, you know, Elijah, the conscious mind is looking at this stuff. So uh, Elijah went into meditation, the conscious went into meditation and said, Shh, you know, open my, the servant, the eyes of my servants so they can see that we have more surrounding us. We have more people on our side than they have on their side. So when that happened, the servant then saw into the spiritual realm and saw that there was more on their on Elijah's side, on their side, than it was on that king's side. So I'm saying that to only show you that um, we are those people in that story. And I don't know, at that time it was chariots and it was horses, but it probably may be something different with you today. What are you surrounded by? Are you surrounded by lack of... Are you surrounded by sickness and all those things that you might be surrounded with? But if you go within yourself, if you will go within your, your own mind, close your eyes to the world and go into and meditate on what you want to see, as Brother Archie said, is to ma imagine something totally different. And now this topic is about many mansions. And we're going to talk about that. But you can't get away from using your imagination. And in order to do that, we have to go within and see the truth, open up our spiritual eye. So let's move into talking about believe, believe also in me. So now we were talking that we were taught when I was growing up that this was talking about Jesus. Uh, and, and, and I want to unpack this a little bit for you. Ye in the word is the word for you. So it's saying, if you believe and believe, remember, believe is to imagine or to think. We already looked at that word some time ago. And now what I do want you to think about is the word in, I in. Now that's a simple little word. And most people would think that, you know, why do I need to look up the word in? But I want to show you the word in because most people don't think about the definition for this word. Oops, here. And in, it says the in is to indicate inclusion within space, used to indicate inclusion within something abstract, mental or intangible or immaterial. So in, uh, in the word in is used to indicate inclusion within something. That is important for you to know that word as we unpack this part of the scripture right here. It says, Believe is to imagine or to think. And in is defined as inclusion within the space. 
So the, so the space that we are referring to here in this scripture is within your flesh suit. It's the body or the personal self. Now, one of the definitions for God, and we looked at that definition sometime before, is creator of the universe. One of the definitions for God is creator of the universe. So the word creator derives from the word create. And create is defined as to cause something to come into being. Now, to evolve one's thought or imagination, that's what create means. So you see, as my brother Archie said, the universal creator or God or whatever you want to call is our very own human imagination. There is no way you can get around that. That's just what it is. So when we think about this scripture, we can read it this way. We can choose not to worry. Go to the space within the personal self and use imagination to allow what you desire to come into being. Right. Uh, Dr. Griffo, I, I do have some specific questions on this, but I wonder if you just have a general comment on what we've been talking about so far. Um, well, getting back to the whole I believe portion of it, um, from my understanding, that's just a metaphor for the Piscean era. So when you look at the zodiac ages, each age or each zodiac sign has a motto. Or, you know, a certain saying that accompanies that particular zodiac sign. So for Pisces, it's I believe. For Aries, it's I am. For uh, Taurus, it's I have. So if you go back and study each of the major characters found in the Bible, you will find that the stories that surround those individuals correspond with those particular models. So for instance, we recall that most biblical scholars will say that the Bible is 6,000 years old, a little over 6,000 years old. And if you divide that into three zodiac ages, you'll get the last three zodiac ages of Pisces, Aries, and uh, Taurus. And then uh, as the book of Luke uh, alludes to, the coming of the age of Aquarius by Jesus telling the people at Passover that they will be seeing a man with a um, pitcher of water and they were to go in the house of that man in the pitcher of water. So that was a, a, a alluding to the fact that you would be going into the age of Aquarius uh, and leaving the age of Pisces, which is the I believe era. That's why everything that dealt with Christianity deals with believing that Jesus is the son of God, believing that uh, Jesus died for your sins, et cetera. Whereas with the age of uh, Aries, which, is, uh, which was represented at during the era of Moses, when he ran into God, he called them I am, which is the model for Aries. Aries is a fire sign, and this is why Moses was dealing with the burning bush. Uh, and a lot of things dealt with blood and fire because those are associated with Mars, which are also associated with the uh, age of Aries. And then lastly, uh, prior to uh, Moses was Abraham, who um, dealt with the age of Taurus, this is why if you go back and look through antiquity for the past 6,000 years, a lot of cow deities existed. Uh, in India, they don't eat cows. Um, in Egypt, they had the uh, deity had Heru, who is the cow deity. Uh, and they also talk about uh, Moloch in the Bible, which is a cow deity. So Abraham did what with Lot? They separated their cattle um, at a certain point because Abraham, again, represented the age of Taurus and the I have, and he was a very rich man according to what the Bible taught us. So then when you're looking at these particular sayings that you find with Jesus telling everybody to believe this and believe that, but then again, uh, as he was making his transition out, because he knew that the age of Pisces was going out and the age of Aquarius was coming in, and then he alluded to it by saying, uh, when you see the picture, when you see the man with the picture of water enter into that house, meaning uh, going now into the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius has a lot of similarities with the um, so-called Holy Ghost, as we are told, you know, what Jesus said that I will leave you so that a comforter will come. And those, a lot of the attributes that deal with Aquarius are the same attributes that deal with the Holy Ghost. So then what you're dealing with is just a progression 
uh, through the zodiac ages going counterclockwise. That's okay, Dr. Griffo, let me ask you a question. So when you when you talk about the the term Jesus, as we just talked about the, 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 that the, the word Christ is, you know, we, we view it as more of an emotion more. And I know that once you, you talked about it being a, a gland. So talk to us a little bit more about when you say, you know, in the Bible, when it talks about Jesus now, how does in the in the scriptures how is it referring to Jesus is that also a part of an emotion or something different so talk to us about that because SRC doesn't didn't, did, does not see a person as the name of Jesus Christ that walked the earth but but a a um, an emotion or a a feeling or a, a way of being well uh, exactly um as I was just saying each age has a motto and it has a certain energy that it brings about with it so that energy of um, uh, for the Piscean era uh, is a forgiving energy, is a loving energy, is those types of energies that exist. And um, like with uh, Aries, you know, the energy is aggressive. You know, Moses killed somebody. Um, you know, he was going to fight the Pharaoh, et cetera. So then as you go through the different eras in the Bible, you will find different energies and different feelings and emotions that they're talking about. So then when you transition into the age of Aquarius, which is a, a kind, uh, loving, um, transformational type of energy, then, you know, that's what it's talking about when you're going into the age of Aquarius, or as Jesus said, you know, the new age where the comforter will come. So it's, it's just talking about those energies as it relates to a um, emotional nature. And, and, and when we get ready to, to, to unpack the portion about the, the many houses, then it will make more sense uh, about what I'm saying. So, so that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me because we, so, cause everything is energy. It's basically what you're saying. Okay, I'll put it back over to the moderator. I just wanna make sure I was clear on that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Archie, you got anything on that? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the eternal body of man is, is, is what I was saying about is, is the imagination. So is it possible, uh, uh, and this, I'm presenting this as a question, for a person to, to, to have these different feelings, even though the age of Aquarius come in, but uh, Aries, uh, we suppose it just left. Is it possible that a person have these different feelings uh, and they could go from one to another, you know, with the, with the feelings? If you're asking me, if that question was, was, was uh, directed at me, yes, because you are uh, affected by not only the moon, you're affected by the sun. So um, as the moon travels through the different stations throughout the day, certain energies come along and, and your mood changes throughout the day. The same way that the moon is, um, it circulates around the earth every 27 to 29 days and it goes into each zodiac age, each zodiac sign every two and a half days. So every two and a half days, you're gonna have a different shift in energies and emotions because it's going from like right now, it's currently in Aquarius. And Aquarius has a unique type of energy and people that are Aquarians are very outgoing and social, et cetera. So then for the next two and a half days, they're gonna be more outgoing and social. Then it's gonna go into, um, what's after Aquarius? Um, Pisces, right? And so then it's gonna go into a different energy. And then another two and a half days, it's gonna go into Taurus. Another two and I mean Aries and then Taurus, et cetera. So it's gonna, you're gonna be pulled in multiple ways in addition to, again, where the sun is at, uh, that's gonna pull you in certain ways as well. So then you have to know where the moon is and how it affects you and when it's in different zodiac ages and, and what energies it will pull upon. So yeah, that's uh, definitely, you will be uh, alternating between uh, polarities as in positive and negative energy mm -hmm. as they call it. Yes, absolutely. I wanna to mention too that as, as Dr. Griffo is saying, you know, these are all states of consciousness. So therefore, you can you know you can remain in some negative state of, conf, uh, of, of consciousness if you want to. That's how the, when the, when the uh, sacred scriptures talk about let not your heart be troubled. If you want to remain in that state of consciousness, mm -hmm. you can stay there. Just because you know you leave the state of, of Georgia, the state of Georgia is still there. It's not going anywhere. So you can always 
leave that state or you can stay in that state or, you know, you can do whatever of, of consciousness. So all these, uh, as Dr. Griffo was saying, you have all these changes and all this going, going about, but you can decide that you're going to hold on to your present state if you want to. And that's what so, what so many people do so often is that they look at the news or they look at whatever, or they grew up in poverty or whatever. And what they do is they stay in that state of mind, that state of consciousness, although the mansions, and we'll get into the mansions in mm -hmm. our next session series, but although the mansions exist for you to choose something different, you choose for yourself stay which right state there. of consciousness you want to be in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Believe it or not, we're getting we're getting close on time, but I, I have one more question. I think I'll just throw this to you, Anala, uh, since uh, in your talk you talked about let meaning to allow, which implies uh, having control. Um, what does it mean for a person if they're aware of this? I mean, from a person, many people are not even aware of the idea of of controlling these things. They, things just happen to them. What does it mean for a person if they if if they have a trained mind and can control these things. I'll tell you what it meant, what it means for me. <laughs> I was I was one of those people who grew up in Southern North Carolina and believed mm -hmm. that, you know, the everything that happened to me, looking at poverty all around me, that that's the way I had to stay. You know, you ask for something, the first thing came out of our granny's mouth was, you know, we don't have the money for that. You know, money don't grow on trees. So you start to think that this is the what life is all about. So what did I have to do? I had to retrain my mind. I had to start looking at things differently and know that th that whatever is out there, the abundance that's, that, that anyone has, I can have as well. The good health that someone else have, I can have as well. I had to focus on those things, let those things, allow those things to come into my life, to let them. I could have chosen, and I have a lot of family members, a lot of family members, who have chosen to stay in that uh, in that state of mind. They're still there. They are still living the same way, et cetera, et cetera. I had to choose something different. And that's that's what it's about, uh, Thomas. It's about choosing something different. Right, okay. Well, uh, yeah, so believe it or not, we're at the end of this program. Next week, we are going to get, we're gonna dive into this and spend some more uh, more time in the panel discussion than we did this week, but uh, uh, you know, time constraints and everything, we have to move on. Uh, we will get to the many mansions. We didn't even speak of many mansions today, but we are <laughs> gonna get there to this next uh, yeah. session, I'm sure. Does anybody else have anything real quick before we sign off? Well, yes, I wanna talk about the SRC challenge. Okay, please. Okay, so we had, uh, uh, contestants to send in their information and the, uh, the panel got together and looked at the best summary and we are so happy to announce that Kashina Sanders is the person yeah, who Kashina. won this challenge this time we should all give her a round of applause she will be getting that $20 <laughs> cash app <laughs> she'll be getting that $20 cash app we're also going to put your picture so if you want to send us a picture to shifting religious concepts uh, at gmail.com Kashina, please do so, so we can post your picture to show that you are the one who won. And I hope everybody doesn't try to come and get some of your money, but uh, we want to <laughs> <laughs> we want to show people that that you uh, that you won. So, do you have anything you want to say, Kashina, about winning this uh, this SRC challenge on in this time? Kashina, <laughs> um, I just want to say that um, you guys is great. That's all I can say. I mean, you really make a person just have to go back and check yourself and to think about so because all of this again like I said before is new to me I'm doing more reading and more researching on my own about everything that I've learned with you guys to the point where it's like I'm looking at people differently now I'm looking at my surroundings differently now I mean I'm learning to just take it in and speak differently now at the things and situations that you go through from day in and day out. So I just thank y'all. I just thank y'all. Don't stop. I don't just don't stop what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So, don't stop. Congratulations, don't stop. Kashina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kashina. Thank you. Uh, thank you Kashina. Archie, you got anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, I just I, I got to get this cable fixed, man. I know what the problem is. Oh, well, we we spent uh, twenty bucks already. You're, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, I, I you know this this is wonderful. I I I can't wait for us to get into the mansions. Those those state of consciousness is that 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 is very important. Okay, grip. Uh, no, I'm just echoing All what right. everybody well, else. Glad to have you here this week, of course. Thanks. Yes, everybody give Glip a grip, a Dr. Gripo a round of applause. We are so glad he's joined our team. Yeah. Okay. We'll look at it, boy. We'll be on next week, November 1st. That's going to be, we're getting into winter here. The second. And at that time, they have to change the clocks back, don't they? I'm not an expert on that. that. Weekend, yeah, sure. that weekend. <laughs> yes, that weekend. So don't forget, don't, don't come late to the show. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so yeah, um, November 1st, that'll be the second. That'll be at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so uh, watch for the SRC reminder in your email. Um, so all of us here at SRC want to thank the audience, as always, for attending today's presentation. We really appreciate your patronage and encourage you to email us your questions or comments at shiftingreligiousconcepts at gmail.com. Also, don't forget that this presentation will be available on YouTube very soon within the next few days. And even if you attended today's program, we really like it if you come and watch our YouTube uh, film and uh, give us a thumbs up and register if you're not already. Um, this is one of the few ways we get public attention, so it really does help us. So if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, go to shiftingreligiousconcepts.com forward slash registration and join us. That does it for today's broadcast. We wish you all peace, health, wisdom, and love, of course.